Um, we're going to speak on uh, remplissage. So, uh, what is a remplissage technique? Uh, it's a French word. It means to fill in, uh, where you insert the infraspinatus tendon and the capsule into the hill sacs defect in a patient of uh, shoulder instability. Uh, described by Eugene Wolf, uh, Stephen Burkhart described the process of concept of engaging hill sac. That uh, is when the head of the humerus uh, during the abduction and external rotation movement engages with the glenoid. The glenoid on track and off track concept uh, described by Giovanni, uh, how do you identify them? For that you need to know what a glenoid track is. A glenoid track is when the head of the humerus, the postlateral part of the head of the humerus during the motion of uh, normal to abduction external rotation engages with the uh, or maps its track with the glenoid. So uh, that's supposed to be about 83%. Uh, uh, that's the calculation when you have an anterior posterior uh, diameter width, uh, it, it occupies about 83% of the glenoid. Now, to keep it very simple, because uh, this is a basic shoulder arthroscopy conference, I didn't want to go to the details, uh, but you, all you need to know is an engaging hill sacs are called off track hill sac lesions, and uh, a non engaging are called as on track hill sac lesions. So, an on track can be left alone without treating them, uh, whereas an off track needs to be treated surgically by one of the options, which is a remplissage procedure. So that's a basic algorithm. Uh, if you have a soft tissue bunkart lesion, then you do an arthroscopic bunkart repair. But you have a bunkart lesion with a bone loss, then you assess the glenoid bone loss. And when you assess the glenoid bone loss, uh, if it's less than 25%, then uh, an arthroscopic bunkart repair plus or minus an amplissage if it's engaging. If the glenoid bone loss is more than 25%, you do a latitude procedure. And uh, for engaging hill sacs, uh, 20 to 40% remplissage, uh, more than 40% is usually an osteoarticular bone graft or rotational osteotomies. So your indication for remplissage is a hill sac which is engaging with a soft tissue bunk cut with normal or minimal glenoid bone loss. So how does the remplissage work? Uh, it's usually a checker in effect against the anterior translation. Uh, you convert the intraarticular defect into an extraarticular defect, by an, thereby limiting external rotation to some extent, and thereby preventing the anterior dislocation of the humeral head. So what are your equipments which are required for remplissage? You require a standard shoulder arthroscopy setup, a 8 mm and 5.5 mm, 5 mm transparent cannulas, penetrating gaspers, bird beaks, suture hooks, or a double or a triple loaded suture anchors. Uh, I usually do all my uh, <laughs> instability procedures on the lateral position. So a lateral position is enough for a shoulder instability repair as well as for a remplissage procedure. So when you do an arthroscopic bunk cut with a remplissage, your portals are standard used for arthroscopic bunk cut, which is mentioned, a posterior and anterior inferior portal or anterior superior portal. And you can place that anterior superior or like what happens in the transcuff portal, a more posterior than usual for primary visualization. So your sequence of surgery will be a diagnostic round of the glenohumeral joint your bunk cart lesion mobilization and glenoid preparation. You can place a inferior labral suture at five o'clock anchor placement without tying, and then do the remplissage procedure except not tying and come back and complete your bunk cart repair and then finally end up not tying for remplissage. So your steps of remplissage is viewing from the uh, HS is hill sac lesion from the anterior superior portal and then accessing the hill sac lesion from the posterior working portal, abrade the bed, you need to have a good uh, bleeding bed for the uh, infraspinatus to heal and then you have the anchor placement, the suture passing and then the knot tying. A few tips, uh, the external, because the external, when you do an external rotation of the head, you bring the hill sac lesion in front of the posterior portal cannula. So you should not tie a bunk cart repair first because if you do that then this external maneuver puts a lot of stress on the repair tissue. So hence you leave the knotting of the uh, bunk cart repair and then finish off your hill sacs and then come back and finish it. And also anchor placement, uh, placing a 5 mm cuff anchor as inferior, inferior part of the uh, hill sac lesion and put the anchor at the midpoint of the hill sac close to the articular surface in the middle lateral plane and uh, don't try to take too much of a bite because that might cause uh, external rotation stiffness of the infraspinatus. Passing sutures, uh, you withdraw as soon as once you put the anchor you withdraw your cannula back and then uh, 
Stay lateral to post report when you take sutures. Start inferior to superior. If not, visualization will be difficult. And then uh, four to five more distance between sutures is a must. And also, like I said, don't take a very thick bite of the infraspinatus. That's a remplissage uh, technique uh, with a single anchor for a smaller defect. That's a hill sac. It's a hill sac being debrided. And then uh, once the debridement is done, uh, you use a pilot hole to place the anchor. The center of the defect, just above the articular surface, that's the pilot hole. And once the pilot hole is done, you introduce your suture anchor. These days you have uh, suture anchors, especially from Stryker, which you don't require a pilot hole. You can do a direct trap in actually. So that's the uh, anchor going in. That's a double loaded anchor. And once that's done, uh, you remove or withdraw the cannula a bit back. And then use a bird beak and uh, pierce infraspinatus along with the capsule there and uh, take one lead suture from that from both ends, one, one from the blue and one from the tiger, keeping the distance, like I said, about four to five mm distance. And uh, once those loops are out, uh, they are tied and then you use like a parachute technique, pull on the other two threads so that the infraspinatus comes and sits on the defect. You can see the infraspinatus closing on the defect. Um, that's another technique where they use a single loaded anchors, but they use two portals. So that's again the same procedure. You require to debride that area and uh, use two cannulas, two small cannulas, and use single loaded anchors on both sides. That's for a larger defect. And with the bird beak, you again take uh, single bites on both sides and then tie them up and uh, close the defect. That's the closure of the defect. Um, then there's a double pulley technique where you use two double loaded anchors, you create a suture bridge. So you can go back onto the subacromial space and then uh, anchor and stitch it back onto the infraspinatus. A whole infraspinatus which are compressed to the hill sac lesion. Uh, that's the video for the uh, double pulley technique. That's a huge um, hill sac lesion. That's one pilot hole. That's the other one. One inferior and one superior. And then... Uh, You take all that bites out from the infraspinatus and then uh, anchor it on top. That's how the defect closes. That's on the subacromial space on top. And that's your implicit pulley, closing the defect. 
so your yeah, post-op protocol is immobilization and neutral rotation or sling for about four weeks and then active assisted uh, range of movements for four, at after four weeks. Standard bunkard protocols can be followed, strengthening activities after six weeks. A couple of papers in favor of uh, Remplissage. Uh, that's the American Journal of Sports Medicine where there are 49 patients, 29 months follow of 8% failure rate, no significant external rotation loss. And that's a systematic review about the Journal of Arthroscopic Related Surgeries based on different procedures that can be done for uh, bone loss and in terms of remplissage, osteotomies and allografts. Recurrence rate is slightly huge on the remplissage side, but the complication rates and the constant scores are quite good. Another review, uh, systematic review on remplissage. Again, this says that post operative clinical outcome scores are generally good to excellent. So overall complication rates the studies was low. That's uh, Pascal Bollier's uh, paper with 42 patients, Bunkard plus Remplissage, two-year follow-up, 70% return to sports, up to 10 degrees of external rotation restriction. That's the most recent one, 2022, uh, and that says a few complication rates, comparable low recurrence rates, and even despite greater bipolar bone loss in abduction rotation cohort. Summarize, uh, it's a good procedure, low complication rate, low recurrence rate, Surgeon friendly and you can avoid uh, open bunker procedures. Thank you.